Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And in this episode, we're going to pick up where we left off on the last one. And that is, we're working with this 1972 VW bus. So let's uh, take a look at where we were last time. We had our checklist we were going off of. And so we were going to run the uh, wire from front to rear, our 12 volt control wire and uh, we wanted to ID the switched and unswitched and so we've done that and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to review that take a look at what we've done in today's video and then introduce the power brakes, uh, the components that are going to be used, and so forth. And, uh, and that'll be it for this video, I think. Uh, and then the next one, we'll, we'll show you the, the power brakes installed, and so forth. So uh, let's take a look at uh, what we've done, basically connecting the front to rear. Well, if you refer to our earlier videos, I mentioned that uh, we didn't have any switched 12 volts in the rear of the bus. Uh, somebody's messed with the wiring in this thing, and so things aren't exactly as they were originally. There should have been an you know ignition uh, switched source in the rear. All the wires that terminate back there. Uh, we've tested none of them are ignition switched. So, part of the wiring that we ran front to rear included uh, an ignition switched uh, line going back. And so, we added a terminal strip right there, kind of in front of the fuse block right there. We'll clean that up as far as it will be loomed and so forth, but um, that's it so far. So far. Um, you want to test things and everything before you start looming them up and all that. Makes things easier to trace if you needed to. So we added a switch here and a light. And this is going to be our ignition on indicator. So when I turn on the ignition, we have a green light shows us that our system is intercharged or intercharged <laughs> system is energized um, and if we press the button in the middle there that puts us into coast mode press it again back into regen over here and there were blanks already in these spots so we just uh, cut through the padding and um, and installed the switch and then this one's reverse so press that the button comes out blue light remind you it's in reverse press it again back into forward we also installed the JLD 404 if I can get my rear in the seat here so the guy told us he says you can put instrumentation where the radio was I'm not putting a radio in I'm like perfect so that uh, that fits in there no problemo and so these things are wired up the only other thing going in is right here where there was just a, a filler a blank uh, that's where our Curtis 840 display is going to go. That 840 display monitors the inverter and the motor. And it's also how we do the programming. And uh, also diagnostics. So, that's what we've done on the front end. So we're waiting, of course, for the motor and inverter so that we can finish that part. And, of course finish the wiring of the uh, control circuits 
So let's see where this terminates. So you saw our terminal strip here and we've got our instrumentation. Where is that going to terminate in the back? Well you'll remember that there was a piece of cardboard covering a hole that was cut in the back here. Again, not our doing, but that was, you know, as the vehicle was received. So, had an idea, ran it past the owner. He liked the idea. And so we're going to put a piece of polycarbonate over the hole in place of that card. I, said, I think I said cardboard again. Plywood. And we took that piece of plywood and repurposed it. And have spaced it down just below the hole so that the components that are mounted on it will clear underneath that polycarbonate. So let me get a better view for you here. So now we have on this side, we always hardwire a trickle charger on our conversions. That way, if you know. A lot of these are just, you know, fun cars and so forth. And if it's going to sit for any period of time, the 12 volt battery would go flat, uh, just because there's always a discharge on it. Uh, if nothing else, the instrumentation. And so, this just allows you to plug an extension cord in, and boom, it'll sit indefinitely. Next, we have a terminal strip. This is our uh, unswitched 12 volts. This is coming in from the battery. And then we have a fuse. This fuse is for the AVC2. The AVC2 is what's going to allow us to uh, charge publicly and also it's going it operates our safety interlock which is this relay right here which disables the vehicle when it's plugged in. So anytime the vehicle's plugged in, charging or not, if it's plugged in, it's disabled so you can't drive off and rip out your cord. Uh, then we have a fuse block here, and uh, we run certain, you know, items that, you know, will be fused. And uh, so right now all I have in that is uh, the reverse lights, which is this one, and then um, my little 12 volt gauge and the light are fused here. And so this is our power relay. So this is where that switch 12 volt signal comes in from the ignition. So when we turn on the ignition, this relay allows power to go directly from our battery to our fuse block. Okay. And next to that, this relay is our um, uh, reverse lights relay. So when we push a reverse button up on the dash, it turns on a reverse lights. Normally the reverse lights come on when you switch the transmission into reverse. Well, if you're using electronic reverse, that switch in the, in the transaxle is not going to be activated. You won't have any reverse lights. So that's what this does. This is a uh, double pole, double throw relay. We use this for operating uh, or controlling the uh, charger enable and our regen override. So if your battery pack is fully charged, it uh, overrides the regen so that you don't overcharge your battery pack due to regen. It also allows us to push a button in the dash and go into coast mode. This relay is our reversing relay. So. When we push the reverse switch, this switches the vehicle from forward to reverse. It's a, a single pole double throw and normally closed is forward and normally open is reverse. Then we just have a 12 volt uh, gauge here, just monitors our 12 volt system. So at a glance, we can tell that you know our battery's okay, that our DC to DC converter is working as it should, so forth. And this is just a little light to let us know that you know this system is on. Of course that should give it away also. And then we have our, our negative terminal strip. So we have all our negative ground items going there. So that's what we have in the back here. So 
after you know and, and you used your your schematic to to do all this so once it's completed what you want to do is you want to be able to you know test it and we test things as we go along so let me go turn on the ignition and let's see what happens once the ignition is on well before i turn the ignition on i'm going to hook up my little test light here so i'll connect it to the our negative our ground right there and we'll take a look and see what we have so we've got our unswitched 12 volts just what we think we should have we don't have anything at our fuse block yet because the ignition's not on we've got 12 volts coming into our AVC2 that's unswitched 12 volts that comes into that and then we've got unswitched 12 volts going to the common of the little relay that's built in here. These are very small relay, can't handle much current, so we use it to switch a larger relay, which is our key switch relay right here. Um, and so you can just go to where you have power. See, when I ground out the uh, uh, proximity, A little light comes on and opens up the um, relay or I should say closes the relay so this relay will close so now this normally open it's closed and it activates the safety interlock relay the safety interlock relay we're connected to the normally closed contacts on that so when we're plugged in and that is energized, this opens up disabling the vehicle. You see what else that you have. We don't have anything that we shouldn't have energized. Let's go turn on the ignition. Well, once the ignition turns on, you can see our little indicator light came on. Our 12 volt gauge is coming on. We're just a little above 12 volts. Battery needs to be charged. It's just the way it was received in the vehicle. We haven't charged it. I can plug it in and charge it. Um, so now the ignition's on. Again, we've got our unswitched 12 volts always, but now we have 12 volts here also. So that will change. We've got 12 volts there. That's our ignition coming in right there on that terminal strip location. And so, you know, I have a legend that shows me what all those are. So I know that all the readings are correct now. So let's, uh, what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to hit the, uh, the switch. So remember right here, this is that regen relay. That's in the mode to where the charger's enabled and, uh, and there's no regen. But let me hit the coast button. Once I hit the coast button, you'll see that, that there's no longer power there. So we're in coast mode. I turned off the coast mode and I turned on re reverse. So you can see that's back on. So we're, now we're going to have power to uh, our reverse relays right there and this is power going to um, the reverse lights right here and so everything's working as it should very simple easy to do 
a little bit of time involved because you've got to, you know, cut all your wires, mount your components, cut your wires, put on your connectors. So it takes a little bit of time, but it's not that, not that much. And to me, this is the most fun part. I love, uh, you know, doing the schematics and building the circuits as per the schematic. Uh, to me, that's the most enjoyable part of a conversion. I mean, I like all of it, but this is number one on my list. A couple other comments about this. The way this is going to be when it's done, we cut this hole here so that you can look through the windows over the back seat, whatever, and you'll be able to look down into the engine bay here. And uh, the owner said he'd probably put some lights in there so that he could illuminate that cavity. And so remember, this is going to be under a piece of plexiglass, and so you won't be able to touch it. You don't have to worry about anybody touching it. You can still put cargo and stuff in here and not worry about it. But, uh, but you'd be able to see through also. So um, that's, uh, that's the story of what we've done uh, thus far. We got our wiring run front to rear with the exception of our, our harness for the uh, Curtis 840 display. So that comes with the motor package and then we can do that and we can finish hooking up uh, so we have our 12 volt control right here that comes from the controller this is forward this is reverse um, we've got the economy mode connection uh, we've got our connections that will go to the enable on the charger we don't have the charger yet and it's not installed so uh, out of all the possible connections here, uh, and there's 14 of them, we only have five currently connected because that's all we have available, all we can do at this point. But that's just a matter of, you know, bringing that wire to here and connecting it at the appropriate location. So, you know, we've got a lot of the busy work done and everything. Um, but there's still a lot to go. I mean, like I said, this is still, we, we've only had this vehicle in-house uh, a handful of days, and so um, we're doing what we can while we wait for components. So let's take a look at the uh, power brake situation. Well, these are the brake components. Um, you know, the power brake components that we're going to deal with. In other words, the, the brake booster, uh, you know, the brake pedal, all those, you know, <laughs> the discs, the drums, all that's part of the vehicle. We, we, we don't touch that. But when the engine is removed, we lose our vacuum source. And so we have to replace that. And so this is a vacuum pump. It comes with uh, shock mount, and the hardware, this is a um, rotary type compressor. So these are, are faster, quieter, and longer lasting than the diaphragm type. All of your, your relay and terminal strip are in here. You have your power connections here. And then this is your, your switched um, connection here. So whenever you turn on your ignition, um, there's a relay in here also. It uh, activates that relay and turns on that motor and pump. This is a pressure switch built in right here. We have a one-way valve in here and this is our vacuum connection. If you want more information on these, uh, we did a video uh, on power brakes, a lot more in depth. Um, on our YouTube channel. Check it out. It's part of another series. I believe it's the Mercedes 230 SL series. Along with that, we always like to use a vacuum reservoir. I know some people don't. We always do. In this case, we're using this reservoir right here. You have 
uh, right there, that's where the vacuum connection will be. It goes right there. And then the hose is supplied and the hose goes between your pump and your reservoir and between the reservoir and your vacuum booster. Uh, they also provide wiring harness with uh, a fuse. T connector and a one-way valve. We don't use the T connector typically. We will use this one-way valve. Mounting hardware for the booster or reservoir, I mean, and uh, and then the vacuum connection, so forth for this. And there's a plug if you weren't going to use the extra piece, but we do, and we always install a vacuum gauge on here and so you know they're not that expensive and it's just nice to have it on there and see what our vacuum is running at where it's switching so that we know that it's operating uh, the way that it should and so these are the components that are going to be used to restore the power assisted brakes to the vehicle. The internal combustion engine originally provided vacuum from the intake manifold. The original engine of course is removed and is being replaced with an electric motor. So this is how we're going to replace the vacuum source with these items right here. A vacuum pump, a vacuum reservoir, and some uh, you know, associated hardware. It's not, you know, terribly expensive, but, um, you know, these are the quality components that will last a long time, not give you any problems. Like I said, quiet and fast. Check out our uh, previous video just to see how quiet and how fast. Uh, all of our vehicles with power brakes feature the same one. Uh, a lot of times we'll remove this piece right here. Uh, we're going to leave it on in this instance. But a lot of times, because of space restrictions or whatever, we remove this and we have the relay uh, elsewhere and so forth. And so we're only running, you know, uh, two wires. So it cuts down on, on uh, wiring, uh, cuts down on some weight. We lose this aluminum piece on here um, but it also cuts down on bulk as we lose that top part so it just depends on the application where we're going to be putting this uh, we have plenty of room um, it's not that heavy that it's a game changer or anything that you know oh we got to get rid of it so uh, but we'll show you that this is the view underneath the bus this is the vacuum booster here, and this is the vacuum line connection to the booster. And we're going to follow that all the way back, 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 back to here. Get my light to. And so here's where it ends, right in front of your torsion bar tube, right here. And so it's only, what, another couple feet to the engine bay. So we're going to connect here and we'll locate the vacuum pump in this area and see if we can get some light on the scene here so I think we're gonna put it 
right here. Job is just to show you the placement. We haven't loomed any of the wiring or anything like that yet, but it's connected, and we're gonna fire it up here in a moment. I'll let you hear it. So this is just to show you where it's located. Placement in the vehicle. Move my light back. And so it's under the the fuel tank area. And there's the reservoir with the gauge. And so just in front of the reservoir is the pump. And so we'll turn on the ignition and we'll watch it uh, watch it do its thing. Here's a look at the wiring on the top side. So the um, a vacuum pump connects to 12 volts and here it's where it's connected you know to the battery and it's got the inline fuse and then this is where it hooks to our ignition source right here the, the green wire right there so when we turn on our ignition that vacuum pump will pump and will stay within a certain you know vacuum range and so We'll take a look and see how many inches of vacuum that it, it pumps up to and so forth. So that's from, you know, nothing to shutoff point. Now, we noticed that the... Um, it wouldn't shut off before. It only gets about 10 inches of vacuum and I think we just run and run. And we traced the problem to the uh, hose that went from that rigid line to the booster in the front. And now it looks like the booster has a slight leak. So I think this car has sat for quite a while. Anyway, the booster probably needs to be replaced. So you can see it slowly bleeds down and we'll we'll watch it bleed down and it'll go down a ways and it will come back up and you'll see how fast it recovers but uh, I don't remember at what point it does that give you a little with a bigger picture here we'll zoom out so you can see it sits behind the uh, the clutch cable uh, or the clutch activator arm um, underneath where the original fuel tank was and up out of the way but it allowed for that short run to connect from the um, vacuum pump to our reservoir to the rigid line that runs forward and then it's also close to our our electrical connections so it's a good place for it with an empty vehicle right now it's quite loud once you have you know a few more things in the engine compartment uh, the, the battery box on top there and so forth there you have it. You can see how quickly it, it recovers. Uh, these rotary pumps are very fast, uh, much quieter than a uh, diaphragm type, but it's mounted, you know, right there on this, uh, uh, well, just right before the gas tank is where the, um, the pump is mounted, kind of that slope area behind where there's just underneath the, the seat back is and so um, anyway so it's, it's quite noisy when there's nothing in here it's just this hollow shell 
it makes for more noise. But once everything's in place and uh, you're out in the ambient world, you'll never hear this thing. I mean, we've done this lots of times. I, gar I guarantee it. You'll never notice it. You might notice it in a garage, you know, or in a shop like this where it's somewhat quiet. But um, no, they're on for such a short period of time and, they're, and they are quiet enough, you won't ever really notice it.